Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2022 Unit 1, Paper 2. And this question was question 2, a question about rates of reaction. So the first part, so part B part I, asks us to define the term rate of reaction. So the rate of reaction is defined as the change in the concentration or any other measurable physical property for reactants or products over a specified amount of time. So that's the rate of reaction. Part two asks us to explain how the following factors may affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So the first factor that we have to explain is catalysts. How do catalysts affect the rate of a chemical reaction? Well, catalysts provide an alternate pathway for the reaction to go, which has a lower activation energy. As a result of this lower activation energy, more particles are able to collide with energy exceeding the activation energy. Therefore, there is an increase in the rate of the reaction. So that's the effect that catalysts would have. Now let's talk about surface area. If we increase the surface area, we effectively increase the number of collisions since there is now a larger surface area available for reactant molecules to collide with each other. Also, then the frequency of collisions will increase. And then as a result of that, the rate of the reaction also increases. Okay, so now we're moving on to two part C and two part C is an investigation of the rate of reaction between peroxidized sulfate ions and iodide ions. And that provided some experimental data that show, that's shown in the table below. So in this table, we see that there were three separate experiments that were run, experiment one, two, and three. And in each experiment, the initial concentration of the peroxidized sulfate ions was recorded in units of mole per dm cube. The initial concentration of iodide ions in mole per dm cube was also recorded. And then of course, the initial rate of the reaction in mole per dm cube per second was also recorded. So we have three sets of data here. And the equation for the reaction that occurred between the peroxidized sulfate ions and the iodide ions is represented by this equation, okay? So the reaction was that you have a mole of peroxidized sulfate ions reacting with three moles of iodide ions to form two moles of sulfate ions and then this I3, this iodide ion here, okay? So now the first question for us then is that we're supposed to use only the data in the table to determine the order of the reaction with respect to the peroxidized sulfate ion and the iodide ion. So we're supposed to use the data here to figure out how is it that when I change this concentration of peroxidized sulfate ions, how does the rate respond to that change? And when I change the rate of my iodide ions, like the concentration rather of my iodide ions, how does that then affect the rate? Okay, and so in order to do that, whenever we're trying to find the order of a reaction with respect to a particular reactant, if we take the peroxidized sulfate ion first, right? If I want to see how the rate changes when I change the peroxidized sulfate concentration, I'm going to pick two experiments in which I change the concentration of peroxidized sulfate ion while holding the concentration of the iodide ions constant. Remember, we can only change the concentration of one of the reactants at a time. That's the only way we will know how that specific reactant affected the rate. So because I'm finding how the order with respect to peroxidized sulfate ion, I'm gonna choose this experiment one and two where that's changing and here it has changed by a factor of two, right? I multiplied my initial concentration here by two. 
And then I held my iodide ion concentration constant. And then in response to this change, right? I know it's because of this change because this was constant. What we see here is that the rate also doubled. So we went from 1.5 times 10 to the minus five to 3.0 times 10 to the minus five. So my rate of reaction doubled when I doubled the concentration of my peroxidisulfate ion. So because whatever I did to my concentration of peroxidisulfate exactly reflected in the rate, then I say that the reaction is first order, right? It's first order with respect to the peroxidisulfate ion. So let's just jot that down here. So what that means is in my rate law, what's going to happen is I'm going to raise the concentration of my peroxidisulfate ion to one, right? So let's imagine that this is our rate law, just a rough sketch of our rate law. And I have my K, my rate constant, and I have my peroxidisulfate ion here. I don't know what it will be raised to just yet. So imagine I hadn't figured out the order. We'd have an imaginary A or just a, a placeholder he, he, here. And I'd have my concentration of my iodide ions here and imagine a placeholder B that represents its order there. So essentially what we just found then is that A would be one, okay? So let's just jot that down. My A would be one. So that would be a one right there in the rate law, okay? So let's figure out the order with respect to um, iodide now, the order of the reaction with respect to iodide. So for the iodide, let us go from, well, for iodide, what do we have to do? We have to choose, we have to figure out um, a set of experiments to use where the peroxidized sulfate ions are being held constant, and that's this one. So we're going to use experiments two and through here where that's been held constant, but the concentration of the iodide is changing, and that's this one, okay? So you see here that what did we do? We halved the concentration of the iodide ion. So initially, we were at 0 0.10, and when we did the, sec the third experiment, we used 0 0.05. So we have that. So we multiplied it by a half, right? And when we look to see how our rate responded, we see that the rate went from 3.0 times 10 to the negative five to 1.5 times 10 to the negative five. So that was also halved. So whatever I did to my concentration of iodide was exactly reflected in the exact same way. That was the way that the rate changed, right? So that again, we would say is a, first order process with respect to iodide. So we have a first, the rate is first order with respect to iodide, right? And so let's come back to this rate law here. My B is the order with respect to iodide. And so my B would effectively be one, okay? So my order with respect to the peroxidized sulfate is one. And my order with respect to the iodide is also one, okay? So I have that answer written out here that the order with respect to the um, peroxidized sulfate is one and the order with respect to the iodide is also one, okay? So now we're being asked to figure out um, based on our answer in C part one above, we're being asked to determine the overall order of the reaction. So the overall order. Remember that the overall order is going to be the sum of the individual orders. So my overall order will be A plus B. So that's one plus one, which is two. So that's the overall order for that reaction, okay? Now we're being asked to determine the rate law for the reaction. So we have to put everything together now, which we've already done actually on that data slide, but this will be the rate law for the reaction now. So the rate R is gonna be equal to your rate constant times the concentration of the peroxidized sulfate ions raised to the power of one, 
And then the iodide times the concentration of the iodide ion raised to the power of one. Because we found out that the rate is first order in both of these reactants, okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. Definitely give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends and classmates. Definitely hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when we upload new content. And we'll see you in our next video.